What's good everybody and welcome back for part 2 of a mid-season look at this rookie class. Now these won't be as detailed as they were in part 1 just because we have so many players to get to, but we do talk about a lot nonetheless. Now, there's not a ton of rhyme or reason to the order, I just kind of went by teams and, and whoever popped up. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into it, starting with the 7th pick in the draft, the Warriors Jonathan Kaminga. Now, Kaminga has spent some time both in the G League and in some random but increasing minutes in the NBA, especially with Draymond out. He actually looks so much better next to Steph and company, and I love how the Warriors have used him. The contrast in how they've talked about Kaminga in comparison to Wiseman is great in terms of their growth as an organization. His game as a four or five man on offense, just using that ridiculous size and athleticism, attacking some closeouts, and recently hitting some threes has been good to see. He might just be able to really help them this year, especially with his energy and versatility on defense, and that's all you can ask for for a player like him. This is shaping up to be the Kawhi type of development path, so we'll see what he does with it. His teammate Moses Moody has gotten some starts recently and really looks like the guy I think he can be. 3 and D, high IQ, extra upside. He's averaging like 33 in the G League, which is no regular feat at 19 years old. He's had a lot of DMPs just learning the ropes and in the past looked a little uncomfortable and sped up in the NBA. But those recent games, especially the 6 threes against San Antonio, he's made winning plays on both ends and looked like an absolute seamless fit in their system long term. And if he can prove some reliability, maybe he helps him out down a stretch, but I bet they go with Damian Lee. Now out in LA, there's everyone's favorite undrafted rookie in Austin Reeves, and he's really been earning his keep. Like most of the undrafted rookies who end up being real contributors, they say he did have the opportunity to get drafted but wanted to be in this situation with the Lakers. He's been one of their best role players and I've long campaigned for him getting more minutes given the alternatives and makeups of this roster. His feel for the game and general ability to fill gaps and play hard are a breath of fresh air for a team that has won, so hats off to Reeves for making his mark, especially around all these Hall of Famers and veterans he grew up watching. Recently, one of the most impressive rookies to me has been Zaire Williams. Williams started off the year looking predictably a bit out of place and behind the speed and physicality of the game, though he did have flashes, but since returning from injury, he's been a consistent plus presence defensively, transition scorer, a ball mover, and someone who's always growing offensively beyond just being a spot up three point shooter. The potential that made him the 10th pick is still very much there, and as the Grizzlies solidify themselves as the next Western Conference powerhouse, Zaire might just be the key to their ceiling. A guy Zaire's crossed paths with for a long time is Houston's Josh Christopher, and I'd honestly say that in the right situation, Jake Gupp might be in the running for an all-rookie spot. Houston's motivations and roster makeup are a bit different, but there have been nights where he's been better than Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. to keep it real. His shot looks much smoother than in college, defensively he's made that a key part of his game though it might not bring the greatest results just yet, and over the last 25 his games he's at about 10-3-2 on 49% from the field, putting that all around ability and playmaking on full display. While he's got a long road before he's at that level, of course, Isaiah Jackson makes potentially moving in long time Pacers center Miles Turner a lot easier. The energy, athleticism, shot blocking of course is all there, but what I'm really intrigued with is how well he's shooting the ball, taking step backs late in the fourth and the rest of it. There were signs of that at Kentucky but it wasn't nearly as smooth as it is now already. Definitely looking forward to seeing how he develops with this squad going in a different direction. And his teammate Dwayne Washington Jr. undrafted out of Ohio State has made a real contribution himself. Since he's really got consistent minutes, he's given you about 11 a night. Hasn't been the most efficient, but has kept Indiana in some of these games. And he's definitely shown the potential to stick in the league. I still really wish Sacramento didn't pick Davion Mitchell 9th so he didn't have these sky high type of expectations and people could really enjoy what he brings to the table. Again, when you already have two lottery guys at the same position trying to figure it out, it's just a little unfair. He's been tremendous defensively at the point of attack like that sequence where he put Darius Garland in a complete box is burnt into my brain. And as the starter recently, he's looked really, really good offensively, like all rookie level good. If there's a trade or he can keep it up in a bench roll, I think people will start respecting this game quite a bit more. Now let's talk about some of the rookies out in NY, starting with the Knicks, Quentin Grimes and Deuce McBride. Deuce hasn't really had much of an opportunity thus far. He did have a huge hand in that wild game against Houston that told me all I needed to know about his NBA future. And then in the G League, he's been a consistent performer, especially as a scorer, which is impressive considering that's never been his MO. I think it would be disappointing if he doesn't see league time over a few games at the minimum. 
I think it would be disappointing if he doesn't see league time over a few games at the minimum this year. And Quentin Grimes has done everything you want from a late first round 3 and D type of guy. Since he's cracked the rotation, he's at about 8 points a night, 40% from 3. He's got some flashes of offensive growth and very good rookie defensive play on the wing. There's been a lot going on for the Knicks this year, but Grimes is a definite positive and a seamless fit for whatever direction they go from here. And then down the road to Brooklyn, we've got Cam Thomas, Dayron Sharp, and Kessler Edwards. Cam has shown everyone that he can score the ball, and he does it best when the big dogs are out. I think he can still make big improvements to his shot selection in the spot up three to immediately give him complimentary value with those dudes. But in comparison to LSU, he's already made progress defensively and as a passer, though he's still got a road ahead of him. Now, Kessler Edwards and Dayron Sharp have been perfect for Brooklyn's current roster. Without them, they'd be in a much different spot. Kessler's always felt like a guy that was going to come in and contribute immediately with his ability to defend multiple positions, shoot the three, and handle it a little bit, and he's done just that. And playing next to the likes of the stars who have so much attention on them only makes that easier. And then Dayron has really benefited from playing with Harden specifically. He's continued to be a big time threat on the glass on both ends, getting about eight of them in just 20 minutes since being a big part of the rotation. Foul trouble is an issue, and I think he's still got some out of control moments on both ends but he is getting better and probably one of the more important rookies in the class right now for better or worse. Brandon Boston Jr. has been excellent as the 51st pick and it's still unbelievable the Clippers got him there. I think many of us all thought it'd be ridiculous for him to fall out of those first couple picks in the second round at the absolute latest. The potential was always sky high. He just had such a bad year at Kentucky. It was kind of hard to discern what was real and what wasn't. This Clippers team has been hurt by injuries and his raw numbers aren't great, but he's contributing, done damage in the G League already. My biggest takeaway is how much more athletic he's looked in all facets. He's looking like a major steal for a team with limited draft capital. Now the first time through this, I almost forgot about my guy Bones Highland somehow. He's had some rough injury and COVID luck to start, but he's going to be great in Denver. Those games he's had against the Hawks, Lakers, Blazers, Spurs are all huge indicators to his future abilities as a combo scoring guard. And I love how much progress he's made as a playmaker the last two years. And he's definitely got the it factor that you can never bet against. Down to OKC, aside from the obvious Josh and Giddy, they've got a really nice group of rookies. Trey Mann has definitely deserved a little more freedom to me, and Shea's injury has allowed him to start to make more mistakes, learn on the fly, and have games like he did against Dallas. He's an unbelievable space and shot creator, and it really is Kimball level shin angles on full display. I wouldn't be surprised if he explodes in a clear six-man role next year. I think he's got that type of potential, and he's just kind of a natural late bloomer. Aaron Wiggins was my pick for borderline top 60 or possible undrafted guy to crack a rotation. I've been impressed with how he stepped in and even started on some nights as the 55th pick. And then Jeremiah Robinson Earl was in that instant contributor early second round type of range. And he's performed well. I think he's got work to do as a finisher and a little more consistency from the three point line. But he's already stretching his game out there, which is a great sign. He feels like the type of player that could stick around in OKC for a long time because he plays defense, doesn't need the ball to be effective, and is just a low maintenance type of guy. And shout out to all my Kansas Hoopers making their way to the league. Now, Charlotte is in this very weird place where they zoom past a ton of tanking stages. LaMelo's been that guy. Miles Bridges has made the leap. Rozier has been excellent. Hayward's done his job. PJ and others. However, I think it's going to be tough for some of the rookies to break through, specifically James Book Knight, unless they make some moves to different positions, especially considering Borrego's history and current handling of the situation. Book Knight's had his moments, like against Sacramento, and depending on the injury, he'll play about 20 minutes in a game, and in his minutes there and in the G, I've loved how he looks as a scorer when he's confident and allowed a longer leash, so the book is far from written on him, and if he does somehow become available, I'd be the first to buy low if possible if I'm Detroit, Portland, or Washington. His teammate JT Thor had a tremendous stretch in early December, I believe when they were battling COVID. I still think with all this noise in the class, he'll be a sleeper breakout candidate that people just forget about over the next several years. He's got great size and versatility. And Kai Jones has had some unbelievable flashes in the G. He hasn't got much of any NBA time yet, but that was kind of expected. Hopefully he can step in and be a front court presence for them next year because they sure could use it. Moving along, Jared Butler has gotten his opportunity with Utah having their struggles, injuries, and the like. He's a super talented ball handler, shooter, and creator, and I'm still confident he's going to be a major contributor in the league. 
Lottery pick Josh Primo is definitely on the right path. A guy who is barely age eligible for the 21 draft, showing what he has as a shooter, scorer, and potential playmaker in the G League has been good to see. And he's definitely been better defensively and randomly as a shot blocker than I thought as well. And in San Antonio, he's going to be just fine. Obviously, each individual is different, but DeJounte took like five years to get this good and used to not even be really a point guard. And Primo's got more raw offensive skill set than he did at that age, just for example. Corey Kispert has gotten better as the season has gone on. I was a little worried there at first given the nature of his game, but it looks like he's going to carve out a role, already been a part of some winning basketball. Keon Johnson was recently traded from the Clippers to the Blazers. He has some great moments in the G League. Um, hasn't been super consistent or effective from the field, but I think there's still reason to be interested in his game. Of course, he's an unbelievable athlete, got a lot of potential on the pull-ups, defense, etc. Trey Murphy of the Pelicans has had a much rougher transition to the league than I expected. Honestly, I would have thought he'd be having a season closer to Herb's, especially after how he looked at Summer League, but I think in time he'll be helping them in a real way. Jose Alvarado went undrafted out of Georgia Tech, but he's brought that Brooklyn swagger and toughness to New Orleans, and it's really given them a boost to what has been an absolutely mismanaged and unfortunately injured guard group. Toronto's Delano Benton had a beautiful start, but as the Raptors have gotten healthier and tried to really win games, it's just been spot minutes, but there's still definite intrigue for a guy his size who can pass it and do a little everything. Another guy who's got a lot of intrigue still is Atlanta's Jalen Johnson, the 20th pick. I think he's one of the rookies that's been most gypped by circumstance or situation. I think he could give a lot of these teams some solid minutes. He's putting up about 18, 10, and 4 with a block down there. He's got ridiculous size, athleticism, and he's improving as a shooter. So hopefully we see him out there next year. And then his teammate Sharif Cooper has been a bit disappointing in the more recent games I've seen from him with the Skyhawk. The talent is still there for sure. I know he's dealt with some injuries too, so that's all part of it. But he's definitely got to get in his bag before he has to buy more Birkins than his two-way will allow. But that's off the court, and we'll just chalk that up as a W. And finally, guys like Usman Garuba, Jaden Springer, Santi Aldama will probably find their ways at some point. You never know with Philly for Springer. I don't know the direction that they're going to go with their guards. But I bet Usman is out there helping Houston defensively next year. And he's already done it in limited minutes so far. And Santi Aldama, who was probably the biggest surprise in the draft last year, had like 20 and 10 in that wild blowout game against OKC. But other than that, he's just really been doing his thing in the G. But it has been at a very high level. So we tried to talk about as many of the rookies as we could in this video. I know we didn't get to a few, so shout out to guys like Luka Garza, Greg Brown, Trenton Watford, Mamu, and a few others that we didn't get to. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Both of those things really help the channel out. And comment down below some of your thoughts on this rookie class, you know, what you think about it as a whole, some specific players that you think are gonna be good going forward. Just whatever you think, comment down below. Um, but with that being said, I think that's all I got. I'm Keandre, this is Hoopin' Elect, and I'm out. Life ain't sweet, Saturday through Monday, but in the summertime, you my watermelon Sunday. Gotta be the heat, even though I wanna play, but you keep me cool, you my watermelon Sunday.